Yo, what's good, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another reaction video. We got Jared Goff just broke the NFL for. I'm pretty sure everybody knows now that Jared Goff just got paid 212, what 212 or 221 million dollars, bro. But um, let's go ahead and check this out. Uh, it's it's not out of my. It, it was somewhere along along those lines. Representative. I think it was 212 million. Extensions to Amon Ross and Brown. Yeah, 212 million. 170 million guaranteed. Lions are signing. Do I think? Hey, do I think that Jared Goff was worth the money? Prior to this moment, there were a lot of questions about where the state of the quarterback market truly was some people were speculating that we finally hit a ceiling and no one was really going to beat joe burrow's contract and while this may be true someone just became the second highest paid quarterback in the nfl currently Damn. and the reason why this is so significant is this completely changes everything for other quarterbacks that are looking to get paid yeah jordan hey jordan love might get a bag if he play if he plays good this year i'm pretty sure jordan love can get a bag T-Law has got to get paid as well. Once again, but the cause and effect of you know, he might get a bag. So entertaining to watch, and that's what we're here to discuss today. So before we get to the content, make sure you drop like, subscribe, and turn on our notifications to help the channel grow. Now that we get all that out of the way. Right. W intro, man. Check one, two, one, two. What's going on, everybody? The Detroit Lions had a lot of questions entering this year's offseason. They had franchise cornerstones like Panay Sewell, Amon Ross St. Brown, and I feel like they could still add another wide receiver to their um, extension. One of the to the wide receiver room. So well, especially in the latter they did the lose NFL Josh Reynolds, who was kind of a big piece to that offense have last year. Decisions to make. In the case of the Detroit Lions, they didn't really make it that difficult on themselves. At the time that we made our last video on the Lions, the Lions were negotiating a contract extension with Amon Ross St. Brown that could pay him about 26 to 28 million dollars a year and then they okay. shattered that number making Amon Ross St. Brown the highest paid wide receiver in NFL history for about a day until AJ yeah. Brown came and completely shattered that record at the same time there was a huge question of what they were going to do bro, with the, the, the record records are just going to be shattered right each and every and year bro because Justin Jefferson still got to get paid and Jamar Chase so they're definitely going to you know I'm saying be well. the highest paid receivers in the league and CeeDee Lamb I can't forget about CeeDee Lamb what were the Detroit Lions going to do? Jared Goff had one of the most unique careers I've ever seen in NFL history. In the pre-draft process, people were calling him the next coming, coming of Tom, Tom Brady. Brady. They thought that Jared Huh? Goff they were comparing Jared Goff to, to Tom Jonah. Brady? Okay, bro. To be honest, Some of these comparisons are just getting way 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 too crazy bro like come on now nobody's ever wrong. gonna compare to tom Goff brady let's let's, let's get that out right now bro's a seven time super bowl and champion and so like far, nobody's ever gonna reach that that, that level season in the nfl he struggled mightily but in his first season in the nfl he also had jeff fisher as a head coach the rams would then get him sean mcveigh and sean mcveigh would devise a quarterback friendly offense around todd Gurley, and really the rest was history for the next two years Jerry Jared Goff experienced the most success of his entire career. And then Todd Gurley's knee would blow out. This taught Damn. Sean McVay a very important lesson. Building an offense around a running back was probably the most volatile thing you could do in football, especially in today's NFL, especially if you're not utilizing a fullback. So in mm -hmm. 2019, he decided to create an offense around Cooper Cup. And in 2020, he realized that Jared Goff might not be the right quarterback to run that offense. Even Damn. benching him for John Wolford towards the latter part of his career jared goff would then get traded in the most even trade in not NFL for real history. bro the only i feel like the only difference between that trade is um the the rams got a super bowl out of that with matthew stafford with i feel like that's the only big difference in order to receive matthew stafford and the theory was that jared goff was just going to be a bridge quarterback until the lions found a quarterback prospect that they liked but the problem was was jared goff was actually fairly solid once given a decent supporting cast the yeah. lions Lions were on fire during the NFL draft, constantly drafting hit after hit after hit. Next thing you know, Jared Goff is back to throwing for over 4,400 passing yards in 2022 and being named to a Pro Bowl before leading the Detroit Lions all the way to the NFC Championship and pretty damn close to winning it during this past year. Yep. In one of his best seasons to date, I mean, they Jared really Goff blew that. over 4,500 passing yards, 30 touchdowns, and 12 interceptions. Okay. Surprisingly, he wasn't named to a Pro Bowl. But there's a huge question Word? of I mean, there was a lot of good QBs last year. Let's, let's this point. be fair still about that. Your bridge quarterback, but what kind of bridge quarterback throws for over 4,500 passing yards? Is he going to be the point. guy for the future? Could this guy get you to a Super Bowl? Well, Jared I feel like... Himself. 
I feel like um the only way they can get to a Super Bowl is if they surround him with more, you know what I'm saying, talent. Because Jared Goff is really good, don't get me wrong, but he's no Patrick Mahomes, you know what I'm saying, that can carry a team to a Super Bowl, and Tom Brady. Like, those two are the only quarterbacks I, I can see, like, carrying um a team of nobodies to a Super Bowl, you know what I'm saying? But Jared Goff is not like that. He He's... The QB, you need to really surround him with with nice talent, you know what I'm saying, in order to get you to the promised land. I'm unsure at the end of the season. You know, regards to my future, it's not up to me. Um, I love this place, and uh, we'll see what happens as, as time goes on here. But, yeah, I love this place and love Dan, love all the coaches, love all my teammates. And uh, it's it's not out of my hands in some ways. You know, it's, it's up to my representatives and obviously the people upstairs. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But, you know, I think I've, I've loved every second of my time here and would love more. And, again, I can echo what I just said. I love Dan. I love the coaches. I love the players here and my teammates. And, yeah, it would, it would be great. But I, it's it's not up to me. It seems like a few months later we officially have the answer. According yep. to Adam Schefter, another done deal in Detroit. Lions are signing. Like, bro, where are the Lions getting all this money from? Like, come on now. Because Penesu is the highest paid tackle in the league. Guaranteed. You got I'm Ross St. Brown was second highest paid um wide receiver and now Jared Goff the second highest paid quarterback in the league. Like what the, they rob a bank or some shit? Like what the fuck? Contract extension. How much like bro, how much money did they have in total at the start of the um the offseason? All the way to the amount that he got paid now. And based off of how he handled this negotiation, you're gonna see multiple other QBs get affected by this. It's very difficult to say if this is a good contract or a bad contract, because at face value, every time a quarterback gets paid. Paid, it looks like an overpay but that's just how it looks i know the salary cap consistently is elevating more and more but anytime a quarterback becomes the highest paid qb or the second highest paid qb in the nfl obviously it's gonna look like an overpay so you can't just look at how much jared goff is getting paid rather yeah. you need to look at when other qbs need to get paid for example the philadelphia eagles extended jalen hurts last year signing him to a five-year 250 yeah, we, million saw, we dollar signed lamar last extension. year right after Chiefs that restructured patch Patrick Mahomes' deal. And currently, as it stands, wow, so you're just going to leave Lamar out of this shit? Is Joe Burrow, followed by Jared Goff, then Justin Herbert, Lamar Jackson, and Jalen Hurts, who was getting paid $51 million last year, is now in fifth place. A lot of this has to do with the timing of the contract and who's up yeah. to get a contract extension. And in this case, the players that are probably the most likely to get extended in this order are Tua Tagovailoa, Lawrence, Jordan Love, and of course, Dak Prescott. So let's start. Dak with is. Dak I don't. I don't think Dak's getting resigned. I really. I really don't. Cowboys off season was what they were gonna do with Dak Prescott. They initially even threatened to move. And what on what makes it what makes ago. it so worse for them because Dak Prescott doesn't have like he has a no trade clause in his contract, so they can't get anything out of him. So they just gonna have to let him walk, bro. But at the end of the day, because Dak's a pretty is, good quarterback, but I'm gonna say he just chokes under pressure in the in playoffs. Because for some reason reason they thought it was a good idea to backload Dak Prescott's contract extension and at a specific point you have to pay off your debt and Adam Schefter mm -hmm. explained this perfectly earlier in the offseason the stakes on the poker game between the Dallas Cowboys and Dak Prescott just got higher because once he does sign that and that tag will be signed by Monday then the Dallas Cowboys owe him the 31.4 million dollars for this season and if they can't Damn. get a long-term deal done by July 15th, and they have to franchise him again. Guess what that number is going to be? 37.7. Oh, they can't my get a deal gosh. That, the next year, it's 144% of the salary. Ooh, for the hey, they, but they want to just let him walk at this point, bro. It's not worth it. It is not worth it. Put your team in a hole, knowing that you got to pay CD Lamb and Michael Parsons' big contracts, bro. To lose Dak Prescott. Yeah, it is not looking good for Dallas right now. Doesn't necessarily want to be the highest paid QB in the NFL, but that could just mean beating Jared Goff's contract. Thanks to Jared Goff, the bar is now set at $53 million annually for Damn. a deal that doesn't top the market. So you could expect Dak Prescott to go for a $53.5 million contract. And the reason why the Cowboys would extend Dak is 
at least they would be able to lower Prescott's 2024 cap hit, and this would give the Cowboys flexibility to extend players like Micah Parsons and CD Lamb. But for some reason, the Cowboys don't really care about this. Historically, they like to wait and see how much other QBs are getting paid so Dak Prescott could get the most money possible. I don't That's know. That's so they fucking this, stupid. But they do it, and it drives me absolutely insane. So expect Dak to get paid. They're just making it worse for themselves, bro. On this list, primarily because my favorite team has the most incompetent front office in all of sports. And I mean, because Jer that, Jerry Jones about is about to be fucking old as dirt, said, bro. Love is in the he should retire soon. Out of any quarterback in the 2020 NFL draft. And I've even said this about Michael Penix. Even though I thought it was boneheaded to draft your succession QB with the eighth overall pick in the NFL draft, despite him being 24 years old and 27 when he'd probably start. In both Michael Penix's situation and Jordan Love's situation, they get to sit down and watch a quarterback prepare for the rigors of the NFL and get paid a lot of money for doing so. And that was the case with Jordan Love. By the time Jordan Love was able to finally start for the Green Bay Packers, he was on the final year of his rookie scale contract. And the Green Bay Packers gave him a one year contract extension worth up to $22.5 million before he even started for the Packers. So they are covered for this season, but after this season, Jordan Love's contract expires. So you don't really get to take advantage of a rookie scale contract, but there's no question in my mind. The time Jordan Love spent studying Aaron Rodgers was so valuable and was the difference between him being a very promising QB or another quarterback that ended up busting. But now that Jordan Love is being given fuck? a contract extension, the Green Bay Packers would be heavily incentivized to get it done as soon as possible. Historically, they've shown that they'd be willing to do that. If they do it quick enough, you might see Jordan Love get paid somewhere around the $50 million mark. In this case, Jordan Love can opt to bet on himself and wait for Trevor Lawrence, Tua, and Dak to get their extensions before signing a contract extension. Or he could opt to sign it immediately and be paid within the top six QBs in the NFL. Thus, saving the Green Bay Packers a lot of money to invest elsewhere and giving him a nice payday based off of how well he performed in his first season under center. I don't expect Jordan Love to come out and say, hey, I want to be paid more money than Joe Burrow and Jared Goff. I could possibly see him sneaking into the top five or the top six. And when you consider the fact that the salary cap is rising, this puts the Green Bay Packers in a remarkable position, especially if they get this contract extension done quickly. Now here's where it gets complicated. What about Trevor Lawrence? Yeah. Trevor Lawrence was considered to be the next coming of Patrick Mahomes. What the fuck, this prospect that could do everything. He was He's in his own lane, bro. He was accurate. He could throw the ball Coming anywhere. out of the draft. His rookie season was full of turbulence. I mean, he had Urban Meyer as a head coach. Who cared more <laughs> this about is still crazy. Heads and kicking his kickers than actually putting forth a masterful game plan to prepare Trevor Lawrence. But in year two, they decided to hire Doug Peterson, and we saw Trevor Lawrence take the next step. Throwing yep. over 4,000 passing yards, had a 66.3% completion percentage, 25 touchdowns, to eight single picks. digit interceptions, and completed one of the most satisfying comebacks in NFL nah, that was crazy. to knock out the LA Chargers in the playoffs. So Trevor Lawrence was expected to take the next step in 2023. Unfortunately, he didn't really do that. He took a huge step back. He won touchdowns, 14 interceptions, still threw over 4,000 passing yards, and he was dealing with an injury all season long. My personal issue with the Jaguars and Trevor Lawrence is the fact that it always seems like the Jaguars put the most above average wide receiver talent around him. That's no knock against Calvin Ridley or Zay Jones or Evan Ingram, but none of those players really cracked the top five in their position. Hell, even the top eight. So I don't Damn. know if Trevor Lawrence's <laughs> problems Yo. with Trent Baalke, who I think Evan Ingram's a top a 10 um, as a tight end manager, Or if it's Trevor Lawrence himself. I'm sure you've seen those famous memes of Trevor Lawrence being compared to Gardner, Gardner Minshew, Minshew, at least statistically. He currently Yo, that's one crazy. Appearance, one playoff loss, two out of his three seasons have been fairly disappointing. So it's very difficult to know how much Trevor Lawrence should get paid. I don't think the Jaguars are going to pay him this. I feel like this might be his best season right here, though, to really season, um, work to up his, his stock day, for, for them to pay him big Trevor money, Lawrence bro. Next off season, and I'm speculating that he's going to have. Honestly, bro, this is the best supporting cast he's had, like, in his career already, bro, with Gabe Davis, Christian Kirk, Brian Thomas Jr., Travis. Travis Etienne and Evan Ingram. This is the best supporting cast he's ever had. This year, it's a make or break season for Trevor. He's probably going to break the bank after proving why he was such a highly touted prospect in the yep. 2021 NFL Draft. And this brings us to Tua Tagovailoa, which Tua. is one of the most complicated situations in the entire NFL. Some Miami Dolphin fans think that Tua is an MVP.
MVP caliber talent, and his statistics certainly suggest that. The moment Mike McDaniel became his head coach, Tua exploded, building an all-world supporting cast around him, both offensively and defensively. In his first season, Tua threw for over 3,500 passing yards. And yeah, this was when he was plays, dealing with injuries. The injuries he sustained. He also yeah. threw for 25 touchdowns and eight interceptions. This past year, he had almost a 70% completion percentage and threw that, for over. This was the interception thing I was talking about with Tua: 29 touchdowns to 14 picks. He's got to cut down on that, bro. 29 touchdowns. He's got to cut down on that. Interceptions. The Miami Dolphins were known as the Dallas Cowboys of the AFC because they were really good at beating up really bad teams, but were never able to take on those really good teams. They would drop seven. And it really, and it really, pr it really showed last year too because. I mean, I would I would not call them beating Dallas a good team because Dallas couldn't beat a good team on the road. So I really wouldn't count that as a a, a win. So they didn't really beat any good teams last year because they they lost to the Chiefs in the um in the um with the wild card round, bro. So like you know, hopefully they can possibly prove everybody wrong this year. But I've always said. That no, you they, especially in cold weather, they do not pro perform well. In. Contract, then you definitely have a right to have some reservations in regards to handing him a max contract. In the case of Tua, if Jared Goff is getting paid $53 million a year annually, and his fellow classmate, Joe Burrow, got fellow $5 classmate. million a year annually, <laughs> Yo, that's you can expect Tua to come in at $54 million a year, or even potentially break Joe Burrow's contract, depending on how much the salary cap goes up i expect Tua's contract to get done within the next couple of months chris greer even said that they're planning on signing Tua to a contract extension that number is probably going to be significantly more inflated as a result Bro, of it's response. going to be cr like the contracts course, that are coming is, up man that is going to it's going to be absolutely insane contracts. i mean i wouldn't be surprised if brock purdy gets 60 million dollars a year annually by the time his contract expires you're talking about mr irrelevant here you have this man on this is this is 30 years Years going in, right? In the entire NFL from the very beginning of his career. This man was able to lead you to an NFC championship and a Super Bowl in both of his years starting. There's no question about it. It doesn't matter how you feel about Brock Purdy as a quarterback. I personally hate him because he always destroys my favorite team, but I love the story. But this past year, he threw for over 4,200 passing yards, 69.4% completion percentage, 31 touchdowns, 11 interceptions, finished in top five in MVP voting. There's just no question about it this man is going to completely break the bank once he is eligible for a contract extension yeah. to be honest it's well deserved jared goff is a huge reason why this is gonna happen but at the end of the day i felt like this was gonna happen from the very beginning rock purdy is going to break the bank the moment he hits free agency barring something crazy this season or next season as a matter of fact it's in the san francisco 49ers best interest to try to extend this guy as soon as possible the yeah. sooner you do it the more more of a chance you have of people beating that contract and the more digestible the cap hits going to be depending on if the salary cap continues to increase so let me know mm. in the comment section down below if you're a lions fan how do you feel about jared goff's contract do you really believe he could be the guy that gets you to the promised land do you like the value of his contract do you think 53 million dollars a year is too much i'd like to hear what you have to say aside from that i'm your boy mike i'm dropping our mic until our next up. Very interesting, man. Um, what do you Lions fans think about Jared Goff's contract? Bro, y'all let me know down in the comments below. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you're new. Turn on my post notification and notify when I drop another banger video. We're on the road to 200 subs. Help me get there for more banger NFL content like this. Without further ado, I'm out. Gang!